So this is a revision video for um, DC direct current electric motors and in order to understand how an electric motor works the first thing we need to understand is this uh, idea of what we call the motor effect. So the motor effect is um, what happens when you put a wire that's carrying a current into a magnetic field um, and provided that the um, current is not completely parallel to the magnetic field then the wire will experience a force. So let's look at this in detail. I've got a pair of um, poles of a magnet here, north and south pole, and the magnetic field um, points from north to south. Okay, That's just a convention. And I'm going to put the current in in a wire, so that's a wire that we've put through the magnetic field at right angles to it. And what that does is it produces a force that is at right angles to both of those things. So the force is at right angles to the magnetic field and the current. And in this case, the force is down. Now, there is a rule that you can use to work out which direction the force is pointing in, but you are not um, supposed to know this for the syllabus. Um, so all you need to know is the effect. You'll be given a direction that this force is pointing in. You would need to be able to explain the direct of reversing the current or the magnetic field. So we'll talk about that now. Okay. So I'm going to move the labels out and just put a colour key on the side to remind us what we're talking about. And the first thing to say is that um, in this situation, if we switch the direction of the current or switch the direction of the magnetic field, it will flip the direction of the force. So I'm going to show you reversing the current. So the current is sort of flowing into uh, the screen at the moment. If we flip the direction of the current to coming sort of out of the screen, then the direction of the force will flip as well. So just one more time. Force is down as the current is into the screen. Force flips to up as the current comes out of the screen. And the same thing would happen if we swapped the poles of the magnet now round. So if we swapped the north pole for the south pole and made the magnetic field point to the left instead of the right, that would also flip the direction of the force. And the last thing to note, what we said before, is that if you have the current flowing parallel to the magnetic field, so the, the wire is pointing along the magnetic field lines, then there will be no force at all produced there. No matter how much current you put through it, it won't produce a force on that wire. So that's the motor effect. So in summary for the motor effect, then we need to get a force on our wire. We need a magnetic field and a current in the wire that are not parallel to each other. That will produce a force on the wire. And usually what that will mean is that the wire um, will start to move, provided we're not clamping the wire in place with something else. So this is the basis for producing an electric motor. Okay. Now, to understand how the motor works, we need to not look at a single uh, wire in a magnetic field, but this uh, rectangular coil of wire. So this is what we're going to do now. So I've got the same magnet again. I'm going to move the magnetic. I'm just going to remove the magnetic field lines out of the middle of there, just to make the diagram clearer. But there's a reminder at the top there of which direction the field is pointing in. And I'm going to put a rectangular coil of wire there. So that's that yellow rectangle uh, in the field, in between the two poles of the magnet. I'm going to attach this thing called a split ring commutator onto the end. And the idea here is that the, the right um, half cylinder is attached to the right hand wire here on the coil, and the left half cylinder is attached to the left hand wire. And this blue band down the centre is an electrical insulator. So it separates the two halves of the commutator, and this is going to be really critical later on for explaining what the commutator does. The commutator. Um, forms electrical contact with um, some graphite brushes. So what's going to happen is this whole rectangular coil and commutator assembly, which is attached together, is going to rotate uh, um, and rub up against these graphite brushes. Now you use graphite because graphite is um, very low friction material, but it's also an electrical conductor. And we need to make electrical contact between the coil of wire and the battery that we're connected our graphite brushes to. Okay, so when you're asked to explain how the motor works, you need a step-by-step, -step, uh, and the way that you do it is to think about the current starting at the battery and what the effect of the current is when it gets into the coil. So I'm just going to put the labels on there, and then I'm going to have the explanation come up the right-hand side here. As it does, little yellow arrows will be added to the diagram, which is showing the progress of the current and which... Um, step in the description it matches up to. So the first thing that happens then is the current flows out the positive terminal of the battery. Remember we're talking about conventional current here. 
So, um, and then it flows through the graphite br brush into the left side as we're looking at it of the split ring commutator. That current then enters into the left hand side of the coil. So at this point it's now inside the magnetic field. So we have our current in a wire in a magnetic field. That's going to produce a force. And it's the same situation we had in our first diagram. So that's going to produce a downward force on the left hand side of the wire. The current will then flow along the back of the coil. Now because the back of the coil is pointing along the direction of the magnetic field, there's no force on that part of the coil at all. It then flows down the right hand side of the coil. Now the critical thing here is that the current on the left hand side was flowing into the screen, the current on the right hand side is flowing out of the screen, so the force is in the opposite direction for this current on the right hand side. Okay. And the current then flows back through the split ring commutator and the graphite brush on the right hand side and back into the battery. So we've got our complete circuit that we need, a complete loop uh, conducting pathway for current to flow. Now what you can see is that this, these pair of forces are going to tend to produce a anti-clockwise rotation. They're going to push the coil anti-clockwise and the whole coil and commutator assembly is going to rotate. In a real motor there's an axle running down the centre of that entire thing and that is what then you use to drive um, whatever uh, appliance you're trying to um, to rotate with your electric motor. And we'll talk about some examples of those later on. So that's the step-by-step -step for the motor. It's quite a common six-mark question. They wouldn't realistically expect you, I would say, to draw the motor diagram because it's too complicated and, and it would take too long in the exam context, but they may well give you one which you could then be asked to label as part of your explanation. So you'd need to know what the parts are, including the magnet as well and the, and the coil of wire, and especially the graphite brushes and the commutator. Right, the next thing we're going to focus on is exactly what the commutator does, because we haven't had to appeal to, um, uh, in our explanation, to what the commutator does. We, it only becomes clear what that's needed for when we look at what happens during the rotation. Now, to keep this simple, I'm going to switch views to looking down the axis of rotation of the coil of wire. So the two yellow dots are the wire, um, the current's running into the screen for the left yellow wire and out of the screen for the one on the right hand side. And I've left the magnet in um, just to sort of orient you with uh, to the 3D version that we had before. So we're going to look first at what happens if we don't include the commutator because then it will be clear what we do need to have it there for. So without the commutator the current in those coils will be the same direction the whole time which means the forces on those wires will be the same direction the whole time. So let's look at what happens. The wire rotates round until it gets to the vertical. The forces are still there, okay, because um, it's still in the magnetic field. That's not going to produce much rotation now because it's just pulling the coils apart. But because the coil is already rotating, it will overshoot past the vertical position, right? But now look what's happened. We were the forces were causing the coil to try and rotate anti-clockwise, but now because the forces are pointing in the same direction. It's going to pull the coil back towards the vertical. It's actually trying to make it rotate clockwise now. So in this version of the motor, it rotates a quarter turn and then it gets stuck because it just gets pulled back towards the vertical. It might wobble a bit around the vertical, but that's all it's going to do. Now that is pretty rubbish um, as far as a useful motor goes. So we're going to put the commutator in now, right, and see what happens then. So you've got the two graphite brushes and the commutator, and remember, the blue part of the commutator is an electrical insulator. And what we're going to see is that the commutator reverses the direction of current in these wires every 180 degrees. And that's what keeps the motor spinning in the same direction. So, same initial situation. The wires rotate round and the commutator with it. An interesting thing happens at this position. All right, the brushes of the graphite brushes lose contact for an instant with the coil because they're lined up with the insulating part of the commutator. Um, so there's actually no forces on, on the wires at this point because there's no current flowing. But again, it overshoots, just like before. And now the interesting part happens. The commutator, the top part of the commutator here, was previously in contact with the right-hand graphite brush. And now it's just come into contact with the left-hand graphite brush. What that means is that the, the current in the these wires here is going to reverse direction because we swapped over the contacts 
with our commutator. It would just be exactly the same as unplugging the wires in a circuit that you'd built and swapping them over, right? Taking the, the wire from the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the battery and swapping them round, which would make the current reverse. This commutator does that job automatically during the rotation. Okay, so as it rotates past the vertical, the commutator switches the direction of the current in the coil. And what that means is it also switches the direction of the force. That's what you said right at the start. And now what we've got going on then is because of that force direction being flipped, these wires are still pulling the coil round in the anti-clockwise direction. And this carries on and continues. Every 180 degrees, the direction of current flips, and that keeps the coil pulling in the anti-clockwise direction. So in summary then, what the commutator does is, if you, and you need to include this in your explanation, is it reverses the direction of the current in the coil every 180 degrees to keep the turning effect from the forces pointing in the same direction. And the other thing it does is, obviously, if we directly connected the battery to the coil of wire, then as it rotated, the wires would become massively tangled up. So the brushes on the commutator um, allow a movable sliding contact, which means that the, the wires won't tangle up and the motor can continue to rotate. Okay, um, so we also need to know how we can increase the force produced by motor. This would be a useful thing to know. So, uh, fairly obviously, if you use a stronger magnet with a strong magnetic field, that will increase the force, and so we'll get more uh, force and therefore probably faster rotation. If you use a higher voltage battery that will increase the current in the coil and also increase the force. Um, this is more often, this uh, improvement is more often stated in terms of improving the output from a generator but it'll have the same effect here. Uh, an iron core inside the coil, a sort of cylinder of iron inside that um, wire coil um, could improve the um, the magnetic field. It's quite difficult to do that in practice um, sometimes, but theoretically that could that could work. And the other option is to use multiple turns of wire in the coil. So not just have it loop round once, but loop round 10, 20, 30 times. And each wire then contributes to the force and will just sort of multiply up the force depending on the number of coils you've got. So that's the way in which you can change the amount of force produced by the motor and therefore the turning effect it produces, which is basically its torque. Um, and the final thing we need to know about is what electric motors are used for. And mainly we've got small-ish electric motors in domestic appliances, quite small electric motors in things like CD, DVD players, Blu-ray players and hard disk drives, anything that needs to rotate. Slightly larger electric motors in things that are going to spin sort of substantial mass like a washing machine or a tumble dryer and then you also need to know that motors are used obviously in vehicles um, increasingly um, hybrids so hybrid cars and buses will have a, a normal sort of petrol or diesel engine which you would find in a, in a sort of old car plus the electric motor um, which enables it to do a lot of um, clever things to increase fuel economy and also there are pure electric vehicles like milk floats and golf carts, so it's useful to know some examples. There you go.